All right, well, welcome back. Uh, so the other week I did took out a PQ here in Australia using Ray Data Vault. The list is on the screen and the link will be in the description of the video. So during that day, I played over six rounds of Swiss and then a top eight final series, totaling 20 plus games over the day. Uh, when you play that many games, it is natural to want to tinker with your deck, take the learnings that you had over that many games and make your deck stronger. However, when you have a successful deck, it's important not to disrupt the maths behind what made it a good deck in the first place. So I want to touch on a few points, a few key decisions that go into this deck when you begin to tweak it to make it your own. So the first one I want to talk about is Data Vault. So the Data Vault is a rare base that was in Jump to Lightspeed. That base allows you to gain three extra health. So you're at 33, not 30, but your deck size in is increased by 10. So standard deck size is 50 cards. We're now at 60. What that has an impact on is the number of first turn plays that we're required to have in our deck to be able to draw them on the first turn. So what I use for this is a hyper geometric calculator. I'm going to link it down in the description. Our friends at Pork Depot have a tailored Star Wars Unlimited one on their site. So what it allows us to do is put in the number of cards in our deck, and then it will basically give us a probability of us drawing a first turn play, both on the first draw and also on the mulligan. So from my Ray deck, I've counted already. We've got 14 first turn plays all across the top row there. We have a 60 card deck. So before I make any changes to this deck, I want to calculate my current percentages of drawing a first turn play. So we're looking at 60 cards. The target cards in the deck is 14. Number of successes, well, we just one, any card, or any one of those is considered a success. We've already got a starting hand size of six. Um, we can ignore cost of first target card. That's um, another field used for something else. So if I hit calculate, the chance to draw on my first uh, first six cards that I pick up is 81%. If I were to mulligan that and search for another uh, first turn play, that goes to 96.5%. So 14 for me is a really good number for any of these data vault decks. We can tweak that number and you can drop down lower and uh, you will see the percentages begin to decrease. So if I change that to 13, we now drop down to 95.4%. So that 1%, you probably think, oh, well, that's, that's, that's not going to matter over the course of a day. And it's when, when you're in a competitive environment, there is that chance that you are going to whiff. And if you're playing against an aggressive deck, uh, it's good luck to you if you miss your first turn play. If we increase it to 15, we go to 97, so we go 1% higher. And if you go down way down to, let's say, 10, you are in real trouble. It starts to drop down to 89. So that's one in 10 games where you're not going to have a first turn play. And in a game like Star Wars, it's all about tempo, trading back and forth and that. Missing a first turn play, unless you're playing control, is huge. So that's where I start with. I don't want to disrupt my first 14 cards. So the ideas and that I had was, what can I do with the dispatcher? It was okay on the day. Am I looking for a, another card to replace it? Am I going to make it a first turn play, a one or two cost? Or am I going to make it more expensive? But then that's going to impact my deck negatively by decreasing my um, draw rates. So that's the first one is, the first data point is Data Vault. The second one is C-3PO. So C-3PO is a draw engine inside this deck. When you pair it with R2, it doesn't matter what numbers in that in your in your deck, but a lot of the time you will have 3PO out by himself uh, and you will need to just do a call on what is the most frequent number in your deck. In our deck, we have a huge number of threes. And when I say huge, we have 21, so over a third of the deck is three cost plays. So most of the time, you're just calling out three if you play 3PO by himself. Over the weekend, I was hitting like village protectors, I was hitting fleet lieutenants, blue leaders, techs, all day with uh, 3PO not being paired with R2. So 
That one there is we're looking at a sample size of 60 cards in the deck. We have 21. We want to change the starting hand size to one and number of successors is one. So that takes us to a 35% chance when we call three that we will draw a um, three cost card. So that's important also to consider when you're altering the deck is that you're not disrupting the number of threes in this particular list here. All right, so the next one I wanna talk about before making any changes to this deck is Mon Mothma herself. So this is what I named the video after, Mon Mathma. She was great all day just drawing Rebels, drawing Luke Skywalkers, Home Ones, R2s, anything I, I kind of needed. So what she does is search the top five of your card, at uh, your deck for a Rebel card, reveal it and draw it. So the important part here is the Rebel trait. So in our deck, we have 25 Rebels in the deck. So if you look at across here, if I'm making any changes here, I have to make sure that I keep the number of Rebels quite high so that Mon Mothma continues to hit. So we have plenty of non-Rebels in here. Yoda, for example, Village Protectors, Sundari, Tech, Clone Deserters. We have a lot, but any if we change any of these others, we need to make sure we keep that trait high. So again, back to our calculator. What does that actually look like when we have Mon Mothma? So let's assume we've already drawn our six cards. We have 25, um, we have 25 rebels in the deck. Well, let's just start at 60 to start with. So let's start uh, fresh. We're gonna look at a hand size of five, which is the five cards that we dig down and the number of successes. So if we calculate, we can see that we have a 94% chance when we have 25 rebels of hitting a rebel. So roughly one in 20 times that we use Mon Mothma, just over that, she's going to miss. It does happen from time to time, but 19 out of 20 is a pretty good um, hit rate. If we were to decrease that number down to 20, we can then go to 87%. So we're looking then at one at every 10 games, we're, well, one at every 10 hits, a bit more than that, 1.5 hits, we're going, to, um, we're going to miss. If I increase the number up to 30, we can go to 97%. So you can see the impact that Rebels have on your deck and that any changes to this deck here, um, we need to consider also the Rebel trait. So please, FFG, give us more Rebels. I've just saw a Wookie, uh, Ewok spoiler, but it didn't have the Rebel trait. So it looks great in this deck. Uh, I would like if it had the Rebel trait, but maybe in a future set, we'll get a Rebel Ewok that, in, in there. So that's my Mothma. And then the last one I talk, want to talk about is Home 1. This is not really about deck construction sp specifically, but it's about the resource counts and that that you have to hit in this deck to pull back effective units out of your graveyard. So for home one, you can play a uh, heroic unit from your discard pile, it costs three less. So if you're playing it on the eight resource turns, and these are the numbers that I have up in my head when I'm playing this, uh, this card, three resources, I'm returning a three resource or less unit. So sometimes I've returned a fleet lieutenant that would automatically activate another rebel and attack. Sometimes I've pulled back a tech, or a, more importantly, something like a blue leader. So blue leader is an interesting one if you're pulling it back with home one. If you're at eight resources, it's only going to ambush in space. If you're at 10 resources, it's going to be able to ambush on the ground. Uh, so that's important to consider. Um, sometimes when at nine, you're thinking about bright hope. But the, the big one is getting to 12 resources. I normally resource right up to 12, and then I stop because then that means my home ones are going to return Luke Skywalkers, which is the prime target that you want to come back, uh, come back from Luke. So there we have it. I just wanted to share some of the thoughts I had on uh, mathematics behind this Ray Data Vault deck and how I use a hypergeometric calculator to make sure that I don't dilute the deck too much when I'm about to make a few little tweaks here and there that I'll um, talk about at another time. All right, well, thanks for tuning in today and I will talk to you later.